Let's start with the prosecuting uh, charges. They seem very serious, Anthony. When I see money laundering, it's a concern. When I hear um, possibly funding of terrorism, that's like on another level. How do you respond to these charges of four unidentified people at Nexo? Well, the charges are ludicrous. There's no other word for it. And it is slowly unfolding for what they are. They almost completely forgot about the two of the loudest charges, which you just uh, pointed out. And, uh, you know, they're grasping for straws to make a case stick. You know, I know that for Westerners and advanced democracies, uh, it's very difficult to perceive what the Bulgarian prosecution is doing. But this is what they do. They give loud press conferences. Uh, they make a bunch of accusations and they have no follow through after that. And it takes years to exonerate your name because there is no procedure to make them actually file anything in court so that you can start file it. This has been happening for a while now, and it just shows the rampant lack of rule of law in uh, the country that I spent a lot of my adulthood uh, uh, life in. And well, and you were a member of parliament in Bulgaria as well, if I'm not mistaken. Um, are you one of the people who's been charged? I presume so. It is peculiar that we have not been contacted. I have not been contacted. I have not been served charges formally or informally. There was just this one press confer conference, one off thing uh, where they read a bunch of accusation and we haven't heard of them uh, ever since. But I, I mean, as a former member of parliament, um, I have to assume that you're very well connected in Bulgaria. Um, through back channels, have you been able to find out more information? Is there any way that you're able to contest the charges? I have mostly lost my nucleus to Bulgaria ever since we started Nexo. We deliberately chose to not offer our products and service, uh, services in Bulgaria. So, you know, I have been living abroad for almost two years now, uh, spending half my year in Dubai where I currently am. So I do not have any back channeling uh, options, uh, even though I was a member of parliament and I was a part of the public life in Bulgaria, but that it was in the previous lifetime. And five years in crypto is like 10 years so to 50 years probably uh, in normal life. So no, I do, I do not. And uh, it's going to take a while until we actually figure out what the hell is going on. Do, do you still have employees in Bulgaria? Is the business uh, there still running? Yeah, that's the saddest part. We have uh, almost 600 employees who have been extremely stressed by this on a personal level. Uh, and we're proud to have uh, employees over there. We have great minds due to, you know, uh, the way that uh, the educational system works. We have incredible software engineers and we were happy to provide 600 high qualified jobs. We paid collectively more than 80 million in salaries, insurances and taxes back in Bulgaria. Never asked for anything. So it really is. Uh, stunning and out of the blue for me this to be happening. We never ask for anything from Bulgaria. We only were giving. W will you have to lay off your Bulgarian staff then? No, I don't think so. They're back at the offices, business as usual. You know, on a global level, this has very little impact. Uh, you know, we saw net withdrawals of less than 3% of assets under management because people saw it for what it is. It is a Bulgarian shameful operation, uh, purely local, has been contained as such with no larger ramifications for the business, which is, by the way, thriving. Across crypto, um, there have been problems with KYC compliance. There has been problems with onboarding, with com uh, co uh, uh, compliance in general. How do you deal with that? Can you be sure, for example, um, that you, you haven't had any clients connected with Hamas or that you haven't had any clients connected with organized crime? 
Yes, we can have a very high level of confidence that we have one of the most stringent KYC and anti-money laundering policies uh, and procedures in place. You can, if you go on Trustpilot and read the reviews, it's always complaining how much information we ask from our clients. So we have an uh, incredible team of 30 professionals, uh, educated uh, and certified, by the way, in the US uh, to be certified anti-money laundering specialists. We have very robust uh, systems in place. We use Chainalysis, Elliptic, all of those software capabilities which go beyond what is possible in uh, the traditional uh, banking system. All transactions coming in before they even hit our uh, own wallets, we see where the money is coming from. We, uh, we see uh, and receive notification if there was an area illicit activity and we can block it on the incoming. Same on the outside. When you transact with a known address that is problematic, connected to illicit activities, whatever, we flag that and do not allow you to uh, transact with that, uh, uh, with, with that address. I am very confident that we uh, are above and beyond in terms of uh, KYC AML standards. Can, can I ask in, in terms of investigations, are you under investigation anywhere else in any other jurisdictions besides Bulgaria? No, you know that recently we settled uh, in the US, which if I ever had something hanging over my head and was worried about, it was the regulatory process uh, in the United States. And we know we settled with all 50 states, the three territories, a bunch of different uh, banking regulators that's on the uh, state side. And also on the federal, uh, we settled with the SEC and the only charge on the federal level was unlicensed, uh, un uh, unregistered sale of securities for our earned interest product. Uh, you know, this is like strict liability uh, case, which uh, is settled on a, on, a, on, a, on a no admit, no deny basis. We pay a monetary fee uh, a penalty, which will be paid out uh, across the next 12 months. And this is the pinnacle of almost two years of work of our gradual leaving the United States. So no, there is no investigation in the United States to the best of my knowledge, our lawyers' knowledge, and we have been scanning throughout the planet to see are there anywhere potentially problems, and there are none. It is a Bulgarian thing, what we discussed in the beginning. So you're, but you're not doing business in Bulgaria, you're getting out of the United States. Are you doing business in fewer and fewer jurisdictions as regulators crack down around the world? Quite the opposite. We have focused on uh, the Middle East. That's why I spent so much time here. It is a huge market, both in terms of uh, uh, um, expats living here who are crypto savvy, who hold a lot of crypto. Also, uh, the locals, uh, you know, they hold a lot of wealth and crypto in general. We focused on uh, North Africa. We focus on Southeast Asia. We uh, focus on Latin America. And this is a process that has been happening simultaneously simultaneously while exiting the United States in this gradual fashion that I described. And I think there's no loss of market share in business. And now with what hopefully is the next leg up in crypto, uh, uh, our efforts uh, will be uh, bear fruition. So you're in Dubai then for business purposes. Does that mean uh, you would feel safe flying back to Bulgaria? I do not see the need to fly to Bulgaria. There's nothing there for me. I have not been charged. I have not been publicly named by any official uh, people or communication. But if a time comes where I need to answer questions, I will certainly do that. I have known uh, always that we have done nothing wrong. I know exactly what we're doing right now, and I know exactly what we will be doing going forward. So there's nothing to hide. What about London? Will you um, return to London? Are, are you concerned about regulators there? Not immediately. With London, we have a, a dialogue with the regulators there uh, over the past 18 months. We are figuring out a way, you know, there was some back and forth within the United Kingdom as to how they want to see crypto. There are some new guidance which we will abide uh, to and structure a business because the UK is also an important market for us. What are the biggest discussions you're having like that, Anthony? Is, is the London regulator the most important one you're dealing with now? Are you dealing with European regulators? Are you dealing with Asian regulators? What, what, where, where is your focus? 
Well, the focus had been for two years with the U.S. regulators. I'm glad this is now behind us. Uh, we're focusing in the United Kingdom. We are talking to the various different regulators who are going to oversee crypto uh, in the Middle East, in Dubai and the United Arab Emirates in uh, particular. We almost have daily engagements with them. And, you know, there's a lot of crypto. There's a lot of jurisdictions. And, you know, those who are unwelcoming we're happy to leave those and focus on uh, the ones uh, that are are your headquarters though now still considered london yes and we are moving it to now to dubai we have a, a new office that is being finished right now out of a refurbishment is going to hold i think 150 people so we are excited about moving a portion of the operational business here as well and how many employees do you have in london uh, I think about 2030-ish um, uh, as of 2023, have to double check. How much of your staff is focused on dealing with regulators, on dealing with compliance, on anti-money laundering, on uh, KYC rules? I mean, how much do you, do you put into that? Oh, a lot. We have about 50 professionals internally, and we learn, uh, we work with uh, local law firms in the important jurisdictions like the U.S., like the United Kingdom, like uh, the United Arab Emirates. So we work with 50 people internally and probably another 50 to 100 uh, with the consultants and law firms that, that we retain. So what about um, commingling of funds? This has been a huge issue, obviously, since the collapse of FTX. Um, you're not uh, using your 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 borrowers uh, or your lenders' funds. I mean, um, to invest in other areas. Is that correct? You're not commingling funds. And how do you make sure that that's the case? Well, I think the first and most important thing here is transparency. It is okay to do investments if the investors and your clients know exactly uh, what you're doing. So you have to be very clear with that in the terms uh, of service, terms and conditions. I think we've done one of the finer jobs here. Uh, and it's no mystery how we generate the yield. We've spent uh, uh, many occasions, blog posts, newsletters, you name it, to uh, provide clarity on that. We do have uh, uh, market neutral strategies that help us generate the yield uh, that we pay out to our customers. We have the arbitrage between what we borrow at in terms of rate and then what we charge other people. So it is a plethora of different strategies that gets utilized and it has to the test, test of time. You know, we are the last lender standing, so we have been doing something right. You know, we had no exposure to FTX, no exposure to Luna, no exposure to Three Arrows Capital. And, you know, this ultimately comes back to the fundamental thing that we set out in day one, apart from transparency, is not to engage in un and under collateralized lending on a, the scale that, that everybody else has. And that has caused this tremendous uh, trouble uh, for crypto in 2022. But Anthony, does that mean you are using customer deposits to invest and generate um, yield? Well, we have different strategies that we devise for our different products. So when you are giving us your Bitcoin and you expect to get four or 5% on it, we obviously have to deploy that capital. And it's no mystery that it has to be generated somehow, some way. So uh, first thing that we do is fund the loan book. If there is excess capital, there still are market neutral opportunities, arbitrage plays, uh, you know, capturing of basis trading, which is the difference between uh, the futures and the spot markets. They are uh, a re relatively low risk strategies that you can pursue in order to generate that yield. And there's nothing wrong with that. The wrong thing with some of the actors that you named is that they weren't transparent about it. They didn't tell you they're going to do that. They, they told you your money is going to stay at JP Morgan or uh, wherever, and you somehow managed man magically are getting 6% when JP Morgan is almost charging you uh, negative interest rates on your, on your balance. So it is not what 
you are doing with the capital, uh, but uh, how you go about disclosing this to the, your investors. And this, by the way, is the biggest critique of Gary Gensler and the SEC. It is around disclosures. How do you guarantee that you remain solvent? How do you guarantee that in case your depositors decide to withdraw large amounts of money at once, you'll be able to uh, meet those demands? You, I think we've had uh, the time to, to discuss this uh, on numerous occasions. We pioneered the world's first uh, real-time attestation showing that our assets exceed liabilities. Now, I know because of what happened in the crypto industry in 2022, a lot of the auditing firms are leaving the space. This is no uh, by by no means anything specific to Nexo is the, the, the industry at large, but there are new players that are filling this void and there are algorithmic blockchain provable ways to show your um, uh, a solvency uh, and liquidity. And we are working on those uh, capabilities so that we can continue to prove to our clients the very stable financial position uh, uh, that, that Nexo has always been in. Right. I've been told your auditor, for example, is leaving the crypto space. Uh, have you found a new auditor? Are you looking? We are working with uh, a few potential candidates. They are, you know, newly emerged or spin-offs from existing firms. So this will be, uh, you know, we would be among their very first clients. So there's going to be some back and forth, uh, you know, in the spirit of transparency, I might uh, uh, just as well disclose that, but uh, there's going to be continued and enhanced um, transparency in terms of the financial situations of not only Nexo, but hopefully uh, the blockchain space as such. Let's talk about your business. You, you mentioned um, outflows of about 3% since um, this Bulgarian case was announced. Uh, what does that put your assets under management at? Still around $2 billion? Uh, we think we're closer to two and a half now that uh, uh, luckily uh, for all crypto folk, uh, assets have rallied in this massive way. I think we're actually closer to three. I have to double check. I don't check this on a daily basis. Right. But we have five million uh, satisfied customers across the globe, and we are continuing to execute uh, for them. We didn't have to resort uh, to any significant layoffs. All that we have done is performance based. So we're very well, well staffed to continue to execute upon our roadmap and bringing the most efficient of blockchain financial uh, tools for the, the entire space. And, you know, we'll see if the if uh, liquidity is back, which I am sort of suspecting and hoping it is, it will be uh, next will be in perfect position to capture that. I've heard you're licensed in uh, around 200 jurisdictions or I've heard you're active in about 200 jurisdictions. Are you licensed in all those jurisdictions? Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a regulatory landscape which is complicated and you do not necessarily need licenses in all jurisdictions where you are operating or for certain products you do, for certain you don't. We are, you know, hold more than 50 different licenses. Now, you know, all honesty, you know, the 200 jurisdictions with us leaving the United States, they might go down a little bit, but still we are active in all parts of the world where we A, have the necessary licenses, B, there are no licenses required, or C, our law firms, uh, local uh, legal advisors have helped us devise models that work despite uh, either of two conditions. Nonetheless, you're one of the last crypto lenders left standing. Um, is, the, is the business model really viable? I think so. Yes, I do, because uh, it goes back, yes, perhaps they're not going to be those insane yields immediately in the immediate future that we were used to in 2020, 2021. But there are ways to generate yield safely within the crypto space. And as long as we are in a position to do that, we will pass it on to our clients. There is a cleanup of the space. Uh, 
but there always will be need for financing and credit. And we are happy to facilitate that in the way that we have done in the past on a collateralized basis on interest rates that make economic sense for us as a lender and for the people as borrowers. I am bullish about the business uh, as such. How much are you lending right now, Anthony? Um, and how does it compare to how much you were lending, say, last year or two years ago? Well, it's hard to measure it because it's one thing when it's in terms of percentage on assets under management, which peaked at 15 billion. It's obviously a different ball game when you're at around three. So it's different uh, to measure it. I can tell you, however, that activity is picking up. There are uh, institutions that are emerging, you know, trading firms, and they have come around to realize that the next way is the only way. And I'm talking about collateralized lending. So the space has deleveraged and got safer in that sense. Let me finally ask you about the, the recent rally that we've seen. Is it short covering? What, what, what's driven um, Bitcoin to outperform you know, equity markets to, to almost $25,000? I'm not going to gain any friends in the crypto community, but I will say it's the reemergence of cheap money. There has been some stealth quantitative easing in the United States ever since, uh, you know, what happened to the pension uh, funds in the United Kingdom. So that has been sort of under the radar. But then the Bank of China, I think they printed something like 92 tr uh, billion uh, in the past months. You know, the Bank of Japan is uh, more or less easing nonstop. So I think there is a resurgence of uh, uh, abundant and cheap liquidity. And this drives the market. We know that crypto, despite being uncorrelated over over 10 year um, of the 10, 10 year uh, horizon, it is uh, the fastest horse when uh, when it comes to the reemergence of liquidity. And I think this is what is driving this uh, this this most recent leg up.